What's going on, everybody? It's Nick with Face Mask Fantasy, continuing to provide dynasty assets to consider buying or selling over the course of the offseason. So if you like what you see in here from the channel, I only ask that you like the video and subscribe. Today, looking at a wide receiver whose value should be high following his rookie season, but has cooled off as the offseason has taken shape. Viking second-year player Jordan Addison put together a very impressive season in 2023. He finished third among all rookies with 911 receiving yards and tied Sam Laporta for the rookie lead in touchdowns with 10. Addison flourished as an immediate starter, finishing as a fantasy wide receiver two on the season, but he did falter a bit down the stretch playing with backup quarterbacks, and now Minnesota is turning the page at the position. Gone is Kirk Cousins, who signed with Atlanta in free agency. Now the Vikings are poised to make a move for one of the high-end quarterback prospects early in the draft, but they still need to successfully execute such a trade, because the guy they likely want won't last until the 11th pick, their current first selection. Given the uncertainty of how this unfolds, it puts Addison's value in an unclear situation because he did put up strong numbers last year, and that production could present a window where you could get some nice value in a trade. Simply put, Addison excelled in the brief time he caught passes from Cousins. He had at least 50 yards receiving or a touchdown in seven of his first eight games. In five of those games, he accomplished both, and seven of his 10 touchdowns happened in that same stretch. He helped his cause with some big plays sandwiched around some inconsistencies, but fantasy managers aren't going to complain with end results like that at the end of the day. Once Cousins was injured and lost for the season in Week 8, Addison's production sputtered out, specifically the scoring opportunities. He secured only three touchdowns from Weeks 9 to 18 and only cleared 50 yards receiving in four of his final nine games. So he was an enticing option each week given the upside he had shown early, but ultimately, outside of a week or two, fantasy managers were left wanting more from him in the season's second half. The new top priority for the Vikings is acquiring a franchise quarterback. Easier said than done. But they are the trendy favorite to make a significant move up in the draft to do so, with two first-round picks this year that they can offer up. So honestly, the thought process on Addison in Dynasty could go either way. You could be optimistic that he should continue to produce at a high level because Minnesota is in a good spot to get one of the top quarterback prospects this year. And Addison showed a decent amount in his own right. He caught 70 passes last year on 108 targets that he earned as a rookie. On the other hand, that quarterback has to actually work out, and we all know that's not automatic. And as long as he's in Minnesota, Addison will work behind superstar wide receiver Justin Jefferson, who, quite frankly, I don't think the Vikings will let get away in free agency. So Addison's opportunity might not hit its ceiling for a time. I think Addison is a talented player with plenty of upside to have a really good NFL career. But not everyone can be a buy every offseason. If I have him on my dynasty team, I might see if there's a league mate I can sell him to while his value is still pretty good and see what I can pry away. There's enough of an argument that you can get a comparable young player and an additional piece in a deal where you land a couple of rock-solid future assets for your team. We'll, of course, continue to monitor this Vikings offseason situation as it unfolds, but what do you guys think? Put any thoughts you have in the comment section below, and we can have a conversation about this. Till then, this is Nick with Face Mask Fantasy. Thanks for listening.